All right, so um, the P words, the reason I call them the P words, uh, as if they are sort of like swear words, is that, again, um, this is something that I've been talking about for a very long time. So, in fact, before I joined Dialog, I did a, uh, an article in Vector in July of 2003 about why APL programmers don't use libraries. And you can't read that probably at the back. It says, here we go again. I hear the old dogs groan to themselves. And I accepted to be the APL community librarian back in 2003. And I said, my task is to identify the most important reasons why we don't make use of libraries and help develop an APL library culture. So, you know, some things take time. But I'm happy to see that we're actually starting to make some, some steps in the right direction now. We may have, you know, we'll, hopefully you'll all be using packages soon. So why are packages important? Well, they're very valuable educational resources, of course. People want to be able to come to a new programming language and find packages to do common things that you need in applications. Uh, they're also critical to us old hands, I think, in keeping APL competitive because there are so many different protocols, components, data formats, etc. that if you try and, you know, although APL is really good and you can build everything from scratch, it's not a good idea. And if we have a look at, uh, I showed this in uh, a couple of hours ago, that there is now a Tatan package manager, there is a registry. There's two pages worth of content at the moment. And you see it's a collection of, um, let's get a more appropriate pointer here. Right, so there's um, a tool to start an APL process, so launch a process under program control from APL. There's utilities, there's code coverage, so there's a, it's both things that you would use at runtime and at development time. Code coverage would be a testing tool. There's date and time utilities. And as you can see, even now, with only two pages worth of stuff, mostly uh, written by Kai, we've already got two competing packages for starting an APL process. And, but this, of course, is the, is the downside of packages. I think Node, the package manager for JavaScript, has how many? It's millions, or certainly hundreds of thousands of packages. You know, I'm hoping we can keep this at, at a reasonable level. And as I mentioned, We've got two dialog packages. Although APL team, that's Kai Yeager, is way ahead of us, and Davin has twice as many. And there are a couple of people who haven't really done anything yet. But at least, at least Gil has signed up for an account, so maybe he's going to start contributing. So this is a, a project that's been going for a couple of years now. Dialog has been funding it, but I think it's fair to say most of the design was done by Kai and Gilgamesh together. Dialog's been following it, not just shipping money off, but trying to, to cast a critical eye on it. Adam has come up with a logo for it, which is, which is really great. Many thanks to Davin, who's been the first real user of the system and submitted um, four packages. And Paul Mansour is definitely not to blame for any of this, but he has been an inspiration for us uh, and really helped us move in the right direction, we feel. One of the really hard things in a project like this, of course, is picking a name. You can't perhaps uh, read this at the back, but I said, so while shaving, the name a Apple Tart popped into my head. And then Andy points out that tart has unfortunate connotations in, in British English. Uh, so I came up, well, how about Tatin? Tart Tatin, named after the Tatin sisters who invented this cake, by mistake, of course, as all good things. It was created accidentally in the Hotel Tatin. So that's why we have Tatin, which is a way to package apples. Um, this is just a random screenshot from the, from the tatan.dev web page, which is really just to show you that the documentation there is really very rudimentary. We haven't put a lot of energy into formatting this page. That's one of the things that we'll be working on uh, in the next few months. If you want to install it, go to GitHub, APL team, that's Kai's repository, tatan releases. Um, 
I love the way GitHub uses, I don't know, this is the last commit message or something as the name of the, of the version, but what you need to do is take the zip file, unzip it, and yeah, unzip it into the user commands folder of your dialog installation, and then restart APL. And once you have that, you'll be able to say tatan.version, and you'll see the version number of tatan. And you can list the packages, and there are dialog packages in there. It's great. So how would you use it? Well, here's a very small, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, web services out there. There's something called has the large hadron collider destroyed the world yet.com. And it has a resource called atom.xml which you can get if you want to check check the status. So http command is one of the dialog packages. So it allows me to go and receive this xml uh, payload into my APL interpreter, and then I get this thing where if I pass it through quad XML, I can see that at level two of nesting there is a tag uh, called content, which contains the answer to the question. So I just do pass it through quad XML and and go and get the. Is that is that the Large Hadron Collider <laughs> accelerating? <laughs> yeah. So if so, I have that as an APLF file. It, it's obscured by this is the right-click menu that you get if you install Dialog version 18. You can right-click on a file, and you'll have these options: load with Dialog and run with Dialog. And I select run with Dialog, and it runs. But of course, it hits a value error because HTTP command is not defined. So this is where the package manager comes in. I oh well. I mean, right now I can bracket load, which uses salt to go and get HTTP command because it's actually installed with dialog version, dialog 18.2. But really what I want to do is I want to load my source with link create, and then I want to uh, load HTTP command with tatan load packages. So I can say link create and the name of that folder. That brings my function in to hash. And then I can say tatan.load packages and the name of a package, or several packages, in fact, which is why it has an S on the name. And then it'll go out and tell us it found it on the, on the tatan.dev, which is the main uh, folder. It's installing version 5.1.5. Um, and then I can run my function has it, and the answer is fortunately nope. So you might think that the next thing you do then is just um, you enhance the function has it with a quad c dot load packages HTTP command. Is everybody smiling? You should never dynamically load from a package manager while your application is running, right? And certainly not in a production system. So maybe this is not a production system, and that's okay. You don't want to be relying on the fact that the tatan.dev server is up and running and your internet connectivity is OK. Right? So this is not the way to do it, although, you know, for fun, it works. So we need a bit more, we need a bit more structure in our application. We need to take this function and move it down a level, so into a subfolder called app. At least this is the way we, we imagine you would use it. And then you install the package into a sibling folder. So I say into this folder, packages subdirectory. I don't load the package, but I install the package. So now it's downloading it permanently and creating files on my machine. It's asking me whether I should create the folder. It doesn't exist. I answer yes. And um, so now it's created in that packages folder, it's created a folder called dialog HTTP command, which is the name of the package, and the version number. And then it's assuming that I have some kind of project manager which is going to take care of loading this when the system runs. So it's created, it's documented the dependencies that we now have in these two files. And you know, there's rules for whether it can upgrade to a new version and so on. We don't have time to get into that. Um, but that's basically what Tatan does if you install a package. So now we can, all we have to do is write something which is going to load the package from the installation folder. 
So we create a function called init, and all it has to do is uh, with well, quad se link get file name init tells us where this function that's running was loaded from, and then get hold of the root and go into the packages and find something called HTTP command and could fix it. Simple? Nah. You don't really want to be writing code like this, do you? I mean, it only took five minutes to write, but um, this is where we start to see that if we have packages, we also need a project manager. We're sort of showing this in the, in the reverse order. The title of the talk is packages, sorry, is projects and packages. Uh, we've shown how to load a package, but really we need a project because really we should be reading this file called APL dependencies and then we should go and have a look at uh, where it was loaded from and loop through the build list and bring everything in. And that, of course, is what uh, a project manager should do. And that's a piece that is still, although Tatan is there, we don't really have a project manager. So with the TOT, we need some CIDR. CIDR, of course, being another way to enjoy apples. These are the logos. So this, again, it's Adam who's been, uh, he's given me a much higher quality logo. This is his proposal for a CIDR uh, logo. Unfortunately, I think I skipped past the link logo that he'd created before. Um, you, can, you can have a look at that later. So here we go. Right, so with CIDR, with a project manager, you say, well, I'd like to create a project. And it says, oh, it doesn't exist. You want to create it? Yes. And then at the moment, this is very primitive. It just pops up the configuration file. And I've edited a variable or a parameter there called project space, which by default was Hadron project, which is the name of the project. That tells the project manager which namespace by default it should load your code into. And I want that to be just app rather than Hadron project because I'm lazy. Um, and then having created the project, you now call install packages again and you create a packages subfolder or you tell it to install it into the packages subfolder of your project. Ideally, Tatan should know about CIDR so that you say Tatan install package HTTP command and it knows where it should go. Those are the kind of loose ends that we, we still need to work on. So it brings it in. And now we need to go and get the function has it, which is in, in uh, the Hadrons folder and edit it. And we can take out the call to init because we don't need it anymore because our project manager is going to have uh, materialized all dependencies as part of opening the project. And we don't need the hash in front of HTTP command because it's going to load our dependencies into our namespace. So if we then say cider.openproject, I cleared the workspace to get rid of anything, nothing up my sleeves. Open the project, it brings everything in, it discovers, it checks for whether there are later versions of the packages and asks you whether, uh, actually it asks you whether it should check for later versions of the packages. So if HTTP command had been upgraded, there would be an opportunity there to, to go and find it. It doesn't automatically upgrade your packages. I think that's something you're unlikely to want. You maybe you want a warning that your packages are updated, but you certainly want to manage that um, yourself. And then the result of that is that it's, it's created the, uh, the namespace with the name that we decided. It should be called app. And within there, there's a CIDR config namespace. So you can go and look at what the project management parameters are. And we have HTTP command in there. But what Tatan has done, and this is perhaps something that you may find a little bit odd and disconcerting, is that Although you have a reference to something called HTTP command in your namespace, it's actually a reference to a namespace that the package manager has created called underbar tatan 
dialog HTTP command and the version number and so on. So you can see it's, it's a redirection. So we can use HTTP command as if it was in our application. But in fact, it's, it's up there. And if you had two components that had dependencies on different versions of HTTP command, then you would have a namespace in here called HTTP command 515 and maybe one called 520. And the two namespaces that had been loaded would have reference. They could both refer to HTTP command, but it would be pointing to the the dependency that, that they need. Yep. So before CIDR, there were already two uh, APL pack, uh, project managers that I am aware of. Maybe, maybe there are more that are in the public domain. So Acre is something that Paul Mansour and the Carlisle group have been using for more than 10 years. Originally, it used component files, but I think, I don't know, is it somewhere between five and 10 years ago, they decided that they should convert it to use text source. So Acre is, is um, you know, a stable and, and uh, mature project management system that is in use. Recently, I, my understanding is that Paul and his team have migrated to something called Dado, uh, which is essentially Acre, but where they've added some uh, tools to support the Git workflow that is that they uh, use in their company. If you want to see more about that, uh, Josh uh, presented it last year in a talk, and you may remember Paul did a talk uh, two, three years ago now on something called, I think, uh, Acre Flow or Acre Tools, where he presented the ideas that led to that. So that's an alternative if you like the the workflow that, uh, that Dado provides. The advantage is there, it, it, you don't need to learn much about Git. It enforces a workflow that, that um, they've decided is good. It handles dependency management. It does things like automatically generate releases where it'll zip your stuff up and, and, and uh, push them up to GitHub as, as releases. Um, so everything, including your Git interaction, is available from the APL session. Um, the downside of Dado is, is the same as the upside in many ways. It's opinionated. It, um, it supports that Git workflow. It requires Git. You must have Git. You must use that Git workflow. And I think it's, um, I think it's very good. There are many people here who would enjoy using Dado for simple projects, but if you have to do things like maintain multiple versions of your system and patch you know, three back releases because you're shipping to your customers, then you'll need something a bit more open. And the intention is that CIDR is going to be a what I call an agnostic extensible project management system um, to complement Dado. So I mean, Dialog recommends Dado for people who who find that it's good, but we think that Dialog itself needs to provide something more, more open. So Tatan, we think, is close to being ready. I think there'll be a 1.0 release that will be included with Dialog APL version 19, so you don't have to uh, install it. CIDR itself, the project management system, is something that Kai initially developed for his own use because he needed something to support uh, the Tatan development project itself. And we think, or I think, it needs to go through a few more cycles of discussion and design. Uh, but we're planning to a lot of that this winter. So you can see the version numbers over there. Tatan is approaching 1.0. CIDR is still in its infancy. But you can see here the kind of thing that we imagine it will do. So things I'd like to see in Insider, um, for example, where Dado only supports dependencies that are other Dado projects that are up on Git, GitHub, I'd like you to be able to, so th this isn't something you can do today, it's something I imagine you will be able to do by the time Insider gets to version one, you'll be able to say, I have a dependency which is a Tatan package, I have a dependency which is a Dado project. I have a dependency, which is just a folder on the company's shared drive, and so on. Or I have a dependency on a Nugget package. So 
So I have some .NET component that I need downloaded. I would like to see a way insider where you could say, call this build script, or maybe multiple different build scripts so that you can build distribution targets for, you know, you've got a, an AIX version and a Mac version and a Linux version, and they need to be slightly different. Um, and although we'll put interfaces in for our own build tool, dbuild, we think you should be able to, if you have your own build tools, integrate them into CIDR, making them a, a CIDR extension. The same for test frameworks. And then there's this problem, uh, if you haven't looked at project management systems, this may not mean a lot to you, but for example, we have the problem at Dialog that we, we need to distribute Conga, right? You might have a dependency on the TCP package, and it's going to be different on, um, you know, you need to ship different binaries for Linux and Windows and AIX and so on. So you need a way to be able to define a set of binary assets to go with your distribution system and filter them somehow. Some people will argue that that shouldn't be inside or it should be inside your build system. And, but these are the kind of design decisions that we still need to, to make. And maybe it needs some way of managing uh, configuration files. Uh, but the important thing that I would really like to see is that it has an extensible architecture so that all of you can say, I have a different, you know, I have my own internal company package system and I'd like to build that into this, there'll still be some benefit from us all using a shared, uh, a shared framework because new people coming in will have some idea, hopefully, of what, what CIDR is, what APL project management is. These are visions, though. Uh, and on the, on the APL, or the, sort of the rest of our ecosystem, I'd really like to see, you know, we have now open with dialog, recognizes a folder full of source files and opens them with a link. I think it would be really cool if the APL interpreter could look inside and see, oh, there's a cider.config in this folder. So therefore, I should open this folder with cider. Well, this is obviously a Dado or an Acre project. And then if you have Dado or Acre installed, or maybe it knows how to go and get them, it'll open them with, with a different project management system. Um, and then sort of ultimately, uh, maybe you also need to configure your, well, th this is a, a use of the word workspace that, which is used by tools like VS Code, where you say, well, I, when I start work in the morning, I want to have these three projects open and I want them arranged in some certain way and I want to use these colors when I'm working on this uh, and so on and so forth. Yep. So. I think I also almost managed to get us back on time. The, the idea here, of course, is to make uh, APL more enjoyable, more predictable, and uh, Adam also threw this, this one in. So that's cider with a, with a tatan to go with it. Um, so did that make any sense? Any questions? Any nods? Any shaking of heads? <laughs> uh, I think this is really, really important if we're going to attract a new generation of, uh, of users to APL because every, every language has this kind of thing.